Hi, hey, thanks for joining us. I'm Renee Bateman with Dreamcatcher Music Label in association with Ace Entertainment Magazine. That's Artist Choice Entertainment. And I'm here with Bone Shaker, getting ready to hit the stage at Afterlife Music Hall tonight with Edema and Flaw. I want to take a little minute and chat with Bone Shaker. They've been around for a while. Maybe not, not all of you know that. But let's get some history. When were you guys born? Formed about five years ago. Uh, Brian and I and Ed, I believe I talked to Ed. Uh, well, Brian and I have always been around together. Brian is a guitar player and I'm the drummer. And we decided we were going to form a band. And Ed is one of my great friends. And I said, Ed, I need you to join the band with us. And then we had Steven, and he's the only bass player who actually liked us. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had another singer, but now we have replaced him with the best singer in the world. And this is Tony Fabric, our singer. This guy rocks like there's no tomorrow. There you go. Oh, my oversight. This is Bone Shaker. Brian, Bob, Tony, Steve, and Eddie. And they are amazing. I can't wait to see their show tonight. Look, how would you categorize the style of your music? Rock. Edgy rock. Edgy rock. Yeah. Leaning more towards modern rock these days. Right. I'd say, honestly, with, with Brian, just the way, you know, and Ed, and the way they write riffs, it's got a lot of... I mean, for me, the reason why I love it, the reason why I joined is because it's there's a lot of southern and a lot of blues in the way they write music and the way that they write they write riffs, and that's that was a huge reason why I was happy. Our, root, our roots are in blues and rock, and so that right. leads us to you know the combination of Brian's a little bit more metal, I'm a little bit more hard rock, Tony's a little bit more uh, southern rock and I'm metal. The, I'm the baby in the band, so I'm a little Steve more new metal. More, and Steve is a little bit more punk, and Ed, if he had it his way, we'd be playing all GNR songs. <laughs> <laughs> so what were some of your musical influ influences then growing up? My, my first three songs I learned was Leonard Skinner, Freebird, Three Steps, and uh, Simple Man. If you really listen to a lot of my riffs, guys, my music is really based around that kind of uh, structure of music. Man, uh, mine was Deep Purple, ACDC. You're going to have to start over with that question. My phone's fine. Okay. I think start my phone's fine. Let him start. Well, what would be some of your musical, <laughs> what would be some of your musical influences <laughs> growing up? Hi, right, musical influences. I'd say, well, the first, first and foremost, it was, it's funny because uh, my dad did stage lights for Mississippi River Jam and Chicago oh, Fest. Wow. And my, wow. I was in my mom's belly at the time and decided to have kids <laughs> and have a family and then that all went by the wayside. But I literally, I grew up with my dad jamming songs on the porch and it was, it was Ario Speedwagon, it was Leonard Skinner, it was Journey, it was, uh, it was all sort of like 70s, late 70s rock, hard rock. And it was, uh, the, the band that really got me into music was uh, original Van Halen, Dave Lee Roth Van Halen. Yeah. And then I kind of moved on to like heavier stuff, like Seven Dust. I still love the 80s stuff, White Snake, all that stuff, even though I can't sing anywhere near like those guys. Right, they're he's amazing. The, he's the baby of the band, but he's the most talkative of the band. <laughs> Sorry. I thought that would be Bob. <laughs> and I'm cut off. Uh, Steve Steve oh, I would say New York Dolls, Sex Pistols, The Bones, Marilyn Monroe, Raquel Welch, big influences, um, old western movies, <laughs> horror movies for sure. Uh, horror or porn? I couldn't understand what you said. It depends on your interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> Is there such thing as porn? I think, I think I'd, I'd, I'd take some of that music as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm there with Steve. Honestly, I'm a 70s baby. Uh, I fell in love with Kiss the moment I saw their yeah, Kiss Alive album, and yeah. I was hooked on music after that. Um, you know, then the 80s rolled around, it was Guns N' Roses for me, early Aerosmith, um, you know, just good old-fashioned blues-based rock and roll. Nice. Well, who writes the music? Uh, just come from a little bit of here and a little bit of there. A little bit there, a little bit there, but I mean, I'd say no. the main, it's Brian and I spent a lot of time uh, working on stuff, and then Asked these guys, they put in their parts, and just then we talk about it a lot as a team and it's good form and it. Bad and we go bad and forth. A lot of times we change things. We, we do a lot. Of, <laughs> I get blamed for that. <laughs> in the middle of a show. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of a show. You know what? The, the nice thing about this band is that it's there's no there's no egos here. Right. It's it's an open forum for everybody. Hey, you got an idea? Except for this asshole. They would disagree. You, 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 they know I have an ego. They, no, you know what? Everybody's open to hear ideas, yes, which is right, a right. huge part of the band, which is nice. Because I've been in bands where that's not even 
possibility. It's frowned upon and it's like one person and that's it. But in this band, it's it's open to interpretation for everybody to get an idea of the way they feel, the way they see something coming together. And that's what's right. nice about it. Well, Steve, I know that you actually wrote the lyrics for Pitch Black Love, and I yeah. and I know that's a crowd favorite. Absolutely. So where did that? Well, yeah, where did that I come the, from? I would say the crowd has good taste. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what's the story behind that? Because seriously, it is honestly, a crowd it, pleaser. It was, it was it was completely inspired by uh, the uh, the simple idea of what if you were in love with a vampire? How would that go? It okay. probably wouldn't go very well. <laughs> but it gave us some nice imagery with the, with the lyrics to, to play with in the song. Right. Is that packing up at four o'clock in the morning? Is that, is that part Honestly, of it? Honestly, haven't sang the lyrics. I'm not sure if they survive at the end or they die. But it's That's, a great tune. You're going to have to check out, the video, yeah, check out the video someday. Yeah, check out the video. Check out the video someday. Are you guys working on anything new? What's, we got oh, yeah. anything to share with yeah, um, what's going on? Yeah, I wrote a song the other day. Uh, they, you know, yeah, they didn't even right. know about it. We don't even know about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's because he knows I'll just change it all anyway, so what's the difference? No, we're well, I right. know you guys are in the studio. We're in Apotheca right Studios. Right. Uh, we, yeah. we, have, we just laid down five songs. Uh, we've got two of them that I've got vocals done to. Um, I'm not going to name the songs because it'll be way too early. No. We're, we'll, <laughs> in November, we'll be releasing one single. And do the, the songs, do they actually write the name of the song itself? Like you said, you're not going to name a song until oh. it's actually done, right? Well, so that is, the, a lot of times, like when I write a song, it'll be something that just pops in my head, the music first, then the lyrics will come after, or sometimes it'll be, be a, uh, a catchy chorus, or like what Ryan does, it'll just be a riff that he's got. He's like, all right, I got this great riff, and we're gonna do it this thing. And then, uh, you know, since Tony's come along, he's given the lyrics a little bit more uh, uh, metaphor. Metaphors. I write very metaphorically. It's where metaphorically. They, you can get the meaning, but it's, you can, the meaning can take different meanings for everybody, but do you work with Malik or you? <laughs> so you actually need to catch the songs. You know, what, honestly, I prefer the Master Right. <laughs> so, uh, like, what's the best part of your stage show? How would you guys characterize your stage show? A lot of energy. No, no yeah. doubt about yeah. it. Oh, well, I guarantee you that if you come and see our show, you can tell that all each and every one of us just is happy to get the ability to be on that stage and play. You, you will not find one person. You know, a lot of bands, it's like one guy who's got all the energy. One guy's like the nut. One guy's like the uh, uh, Angus. In our band, I think everybody gets up Everyone's there. Everyone's nuts. Does right. what they got to do because nuts. we enjoy playing the music that we write. What's your favorite song? Play. Oh boy, and you know what? If this is five different answers, that's okay. For me, <laughs> my, my favorite one. Song. It has to be a bone shaker oh. song. <laughs> Ryan, you go for it. I don't know any of the titles of our songs, so. <laughs> <laughs> I go by riff. You know what I'm Well, I'll tell you what. I love, I love them all. Right. But I have to. There's some new ones right, right now. Really the new good. ones are fresh in our right, mind yeah, because yeah, we've yeah. been working on them. And since we don't want to release the name of them yet. I can't say what my favorite right. tongue is, but we still, right still have right some, <laughs> we still have some classics that we love, like you know, just uh, Circle or just even our title, our title track, Bone Shaker. Bone Shaker. Right. Um, we got a song, Pink House. Was, Pink House, that everyone seems to like. That play Another live. fan favorite. Yeah. Um, there's just you know, but we do have a lot of new stuff that's coming out or that we're working on that. As a musician. You've already played those other songs, so now Thousands of times. whatever you're working on now is like the next thing you love the most. Right. All right. So I, think I, said I love that. vague answers because it really doesn't commit to anything. Yeah. I, so That's you how guys... I am with women. No, wait, women. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I, I, you know, <laughs> here, honestly, love you. honestly, you want to answer something that we just recorded? Vocals. I love playing with these guys. I love playing it insane. Yes. Insane. We'll give you that. Insane is yeah. one of the new tunes, I, I've actually heard and that'll be that one coming out here song. shortly yeah. that we've got. These guys did an amazing job laying the laying the music down too. The, I mean, the, the the bed that they laid down for me to lay vocals over is amazing, and I can't wait to share the song with them. Yeah, and wait till you hear the music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there actually is such respect in this band, and I love it. And I've been love being a part of you guys for actually like five years. I've seen almost every show of yours. <laughs> And so I wanted to thank you for your time. I know you guys probably got to rush off to sound check right now. Sound check so I, up, but thank I you. super appreciate your time. Thank check you this out on Dreamcatcher Music Label, Ace Magazine. Again, that's Artist Choice Entertainment. And we're going to get it out on the Facebook, Bone Shaker Facebook. We are also going to be starting to call ourselves more Bone Shaker Chicago, Chicago. now. Okay. 
Okay. Because there are a couple other Bone Shaker bands out, and people are like, how can I find you on Spotify? We're going to start being called Bone Shaker. Chicago. Bone, Bone Shaker, Shaker Chicago. Chicago. Rock and roll, man. And just right. another thing uh, I want to also say that legally, anything I said in this uh, interview, <laughs> I'm not responsible. It's null and void. It's null and void. <laughs> All right, again, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank yes. you. Yes. See you soon. All right, All right take care.